Hey guys, sorry I'm not there today. Uh, I have a meeting at my son's school that I can't miss, so I am teaching you this way. Um, a little bit of review first um, from last week. How many different ways can you rearrange the letters of the word prom? And then how many different ways can the first three letters be of prom rearranged? And then if the first letter has to be a P, how many ways are there to arrange the letters? So, take a second, somebody hits pause, please, and we'll go from there. So for the first one, again, remember, one of the best ways to go through doing this is just give out number blanks. We're going to get to talk about more complex ways in a minute, but if we have more complex, um, if we have four slots here, we have four choices for the first one, three choices for the second letter, two, and then one. So that would give you a grand total of 24 ways. Um, how many different ways can the first three letters of the word prom be arranged? So if we do that, we've got M staying there, so that's one choice there. So we just got the first three letters. So you've got three choices for the first one, two for the second, one for the last. So then that takes you down to six. So it's effectively the same, just the same thing as having a three-letter word. And then for the last one, the first letter has to be a P. How many ways are there to arrange the word. So in this case, it's effectively the same thing as the second one. Because you've got one choice for that one, then you've got three times two times one. So that gives you six choices there as well. And what we're going to do, well, actually I'm going to have you guys go into a discussion now. Um, in your groups of four, I would like you to discuss, oops, wrong slide. There we go. Um, I want you to put, say I'm putting my class in groups of four. So when I pick that very first group of four, I want to know how many different ways are there that I can pick that group of four. And does it change if I don't care if I, you know, I just want the four people in the group, or if I'm going to assign them a specific role. So one person's going to be the recorder, one's going to be the leader, one's going to be the timer, one's going to be the presenter. So I'm going to give you two minutes to talk about that, and then let's discuss it a bit. One minute left. One minute. All right, that's time. All right, so a couple of things. I'm going to guess most of you came up with pretty easy. And so let's say there's 25 people in the class. So I've got a group of four. So I've got 25 choices for the first person, 24 for the second, 23 for the third, 22 for the last one. Okay. Now, this is actually the answer to the second part of the question. 
The second part of the question asks how many different is the leader because you know I would have 25 choices for the leader, recorder, timer, presenter. Because if you think about the groups that you're in now, if you have four people or in the group or three people, it wouldn't really matter who I picked first. So for example, you know, if I have student A, student B, student C, student D, you know, if I'm picking from all of them, let me move this timer out of the way. If I'm picking from them, you know, it wouldn't really matter if I pick D first and then C and then B and then, or A and then B because they're all together in a group. Or likewise, you know, if I had picked this person first, then this person, then this person, and this person. Or if I had picked, you know, him first, her second, third, fourth. Because if it's just a group, as long as they're all together, that's all that matters. Um, so the next question would be, how many different ways could these guys be ordered? So if I'm picking them, how many different groups, so how many unique ways to pick these guys? So you would again have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, fairly familiar number of 24. And so what you end up needing to do Let's see, 24 factorial, 25. Um, so you get 25 times 24 times 23 times 22. So you'd end up with 303,600 different ways of picking those groups that way. But now again, remember, out of those groups, there are sets of 24, which are the same four people. Now those are coming from here. Okay, so out of those 3, 303,600 groups that if you, this is a class of 25, I'm picking you from, there are 24 different ways that I'm picking the group that you're currently sitting in. So I could have picked you, know, the person, you first, and the person across from you second, the person to your left third, the person to your right fourth. I could have picked the person to your right fourth, then you, then the person across from you, the person to the left, etc. And if order's not mattering, there's 24 different ways of doing that. And so that's and that's going to be true for every group of four. And so you end up dividing that out. And that would give you... Oops, wrong button. So if I divide that by 24, that means that there are actually 12,650 unique groups And, you know, order doesn't matter. Okay. So however you want to set that up is fine. Um, so, uh, not, uh, that's a little bit extreme, but um, so we're going to talk about today about easier ways of doing that than necessarily have to write things out because, of course, you know, if we're picking, I don't know, the state of Illinois, a couple million people, and you have to pick a thousand different people out of that for a survey, how do you go about picking that? How many different combinations are there? Is it important? That type of thing. So first things first, um, permutations. Picking is called, there's something called permutations the first, is the first way of doing this. And this is when order matters. So the first, having the first person be picked first for a particular role or the fact that that number comes first. So like a bike lock combination would be important. Um, you know, the first number has to be a seven. The second number can't, you know, or like your password. You know, if you have eight letters to pick your password, you can't just type them in whatever random order that you want. You have to pick, you know, type in the specific letter for the specific one. Okay. So if it matters, um, what we're going to end up doing is this. It's often, um, often called, sometimes people refer to it as picking. So like, you know, seven pick two, that means you're going to pick two things out of seven. Um, the way that we represent this mathematically is this. So if we're picking our items from n elements, notation is shown one of two different ways. One way is, so permutation of n choose r. So n is the group, r is what you're picking. And then the second one is the, actually the way your calculator spells it out, where it's going to be NPR. Um, the first, again, the group comes first, the number of choices comes second. 
you need to pause it now, please do so. So as the math behind it is this. Um, your book goes through a very specific general way of doing it um, with variables. I'm just going to kind of give you a more general example. So um, let's go back to the classroom. So we have 25, and we're going to pick 4. Oops. So now the way that we ended up doing it was we want 25 times 24 times 23 times 22. Okay, so now again, we're going to pick four people. It matters who's picked first, who's picked second, who's picked third, who's picked fourth. And so what we ended up doing was this. Now the problem is that in terms of doing this, in terms of calculations and doing it quickly, we need to have a shortcut way. If you remember from the factorial, what we ended up doing was um, we ended up saying 25 factorial is 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 dot 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 times 3 times 2 actually let's go one more spot there times 21 times dot 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 times 3 times 2 times 1 right and so if we could use that somehow life would be a lot easier. And the way that we do that is this. We're going to divide it through. What are, the, what are the numbers that we don't need? We're going to divide out all the numbers we don't need. Well, we don't need the 21. We don't need the 20. We don't need the 19, the 18, the 17, all the way down to the 3, the 2, the 1. And so what ends up happening then is the 1s divide out, the 2s divide out, the 3s divide out, blah, 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 all the way up to the 21s. And so then you get left with the 25 times 24. So you get left with this, the 25 times 24 times 23 times 22. The question is, what is this number down here below? So I'm, down here, remember, is 21 through down here is 21 through 20 or 21 through 1 being multiplied together. So that's going to be 21 factorial. Okay, so this is effectively the whole group factorial over the not needed factorial. And so then the question is, how can we make that in terms of n's and r's? N is being the whole group. Now I needed 4. How do I get 21 from, from that? I'm going to take the group minus however many I needed. And more specifically, I believe I've got it written nicer here. I got that. Again, this would be a good time to pause. So then, you would go through and you can just type that out. So again, so let's say if I've had, you know, 40, here, P of 40, choose, let's say, 8. So you could go through and write out and type out 40 times 39 times 38, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Except that when you can just go 40 factorial over... 40 minus 8 factorial. So that's going to be 40. Oops, getting ahead of myself, thinking about the 32 on the bottom. It's going to be 42 factorial over. Oh my gosh, now I just goofed it up again. Nice to know things, some things don't change, right? 40 factorial over 32 factorial. In terms of typing that in on your calculator, you should have a factorial key somewhere. Um, on your on the TI 80 whatevers, it's going to be underneath your math options. So for that, you hit. Um, 40, and then math, over to probability, choose option 4, divided by 32, math, factorial. And you get a very, very large number in the about 3 trillion different ways that you can pick 8 things out of 40. Now, a different way that you can go through and do this as well as some of you may have already seen is like this. If you type in your group first, if you go over to math and probability, you'll notice the options two and well, option number two, NPR, and that's the notation, as I said earlier, would be what you see on your calculator. So then you would choose that as your option, and then you could choose eight, because that's how many you're actually choosing from, and then it will go through and do the math for you there. Okay? We'll do more of that as we go. Now the other way is what happens if we've got the combinations. Combinations are where order does not matter. All you care is that everybody's in a group. It doesn't either you're in the group or you're not in the group. Where you are, there is no hierarchy to the group. Um, so it's when picking a group of arrangements when order does not matter. 
and oftentimes it, you'll hear the word choosing in, with, in reference to it. And so if you're choosing R items from N elements, the notation is either a combination of N choose R, N of R, or then you've got N, N combo R, N choose R, like that. And again, the second one is the way that you see it in the calculator. Pause, please. So the math behind this is very much similar to the other one. So let's say if we go back again, like we said, so we've got the 25, choose 4, that gave us a number of, excuse me, do, 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 oh, we never actually figured that out, did we? 30,000 something? So, come on. So 25, pick 4, gave us, oh yeah, the 303,600. And then remember what we ended up doing is, so we've got, so again, this is again, remember, 25 factorial over 25 minus 4 factorial. This is again, we want to keep this in general terms so that we don't have to worry too much about things. Now the question is, what do we end up dividing through this by? Now remember, we ended up dividing this through by 24 in the beginning, and this is coming from 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so this is the different ways four people, four things can be chosen. And simply said, that's 4 factorial. And so that's what we need to go through and continue to divide that through by. And so the basic form of that then, the numbers on top stays the same. It's the entire group ordered factorial. And then the bottom is still going to be very similar to permutations, so you still have to get rid of all the extra stuff that you need. Sorry. So effectively, this is your group factorial divided by your extras factorial divided by your picked factorial. And again, the second part goes through, and it's just getting rid of all the different redundant ways of picking those. So again, if you're in a group of four, <coughs> There are 24 different ways I could have, the computer could have picked U4 for that group. If you're in a group of three, there's six different ways that you guys could, get a, could have gotten picked. And again, if you need to pause here, please do so. So, as an example, now, one of the things you're going to have to go through and do is when, with these problems, you're going to have to say, is this a combination or a permutation? Does order matter? Does it matter that what comes first, what comes second, what comes third? If it does, then you're going to use the permutations. If it doesn't, you're going to use combinations. And you have to be very careful because in an example like this, a locker combination consists of three numbers from 0 to 49. Find the number of combinations that are possible. Now, it says combinations, but is this really a combination? You have to ask yourself, does order matter? When you're tight, you've got three numbers in your locker combination. Does it matter? Can you put them in any order? No. So this is it. So these really should be called locker permutations. So in this case here, how many numbers do you have for the group? You have 50 choices because you have to include 0. 1 through 49 is 49 numbers plus 0 is 50. So you got 50 factorial and you're going to choose, well here, technically it's 3 factorial. It's not going to be 3 factorial, it's going to be 50 minus 3 factorial. So it's going to be 50 factorial over 47 factorial. Or, so here, actually, let's do this. So it's permutation of 50, choose 3. Now, could you type in 50 times 49 times 40 in your calculator? Yes. The reason why we're not doing that right now, and I want you guys to either use the factorial buttons if you have a scientific calculator, or use the permutation option if you have a regular calculator, or if you have a scientific calculator, graphing calculator, is so you can get in the habit of doing this. So we go 50, math, oh, you can go backwards to the left, that works too, 
two, and then you're going to choose three items. So there are 117,600 different locker combinations for somebody to try to break into your locker. And that's good because if there wasn't, if they would just, you'll put them in any order, then that would choose, oops, that would reduce the number because you divide that through by what? Three times four, three factorial, which is six. You can just do it this way. See, there's the choose. We bring it down to 19,000, just under 20,000. It's the same thing with your passwords for, you know, your Instagram, MySpace, Google, et cetera, which is also, well, anyway, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Again, pause if you need to. How many different ways can you be dealt a five-card hand out of a card, deck of 52 cards? If you're dealing with a hand, if you're playing with a hand, you know, it's, the order here does not matter. You can rearrange the cards, do whatever. So here, does order matter? The answer is no. I know in some games it does in terms of what comes first or, you know, that type of thing. But um, just for a standard five-card hand, no, it doesn't. So then in this case, it's going to be you're doing a combination of 52, choose 5. So again, cal so this would be... Now again, it's important to understand how the formula works because on an extension, I'm probably going to end up asking you stuff that's going to relate back to this. And you're going to need to understand how that works. Now again, the shortcut is basically, if you're doing this, well, if you have 52 numbers and you're picking 5, you don't need 47 of them. So that's why we're getting rid of 47 factorial. So I would like you to write that down. Some of them you can do on the calculator. Some of them I, you're going to have to understand how to do this. 52, choose 5. You're going to come up with... Oops, it's off the screen. So there are... 2,598,960 different ways you can be dealt five cards. Which is why some of those, you know, it's hard to get four of a kind. Because you're looking for specific, only four specific cards. But we're going to get more into that next week. Okay. Now for the balance of the period, what again, pause if you need to. Balance of the period. I would like you to work on these. Some of them are just, please read the directions, because some of them are just a matter, hey, does order matter? Does it order not? So if it does, then obviously, you know, shore things up. If they're not, then, you know, you're going to write it down and model it, whatever. So some of it's straight calculator work, some of it's an example, some of it you, they tell you it's combination, some of it you have to decide. So don't go too fast on those. I will be here tomorrow. I'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.